All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. I also want to give double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations unto you elect across the four ones of this earth, fulfilling your lots in all truth and all sincerity. I'm the priest Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas branch coming to you all with another lesson through the Holy Spirit. And Lord willing, this lesson here will be edifying unto the flock and the name Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father who the world calls God. And the name Yahweh Shai is the true name of the Heavenly Father's beloved, only begotten Son, on who the world calls Jesus Christ. So what I want to talk about is uh, just something pertaining to the IUIC's Passover. And I do want to make mention of this as we all give warning when we do these lessons and these shows and we give warning, which is uh, really from the Heavenly Father. We've been set aside to stand on our watch and give warning to the house of Israel. Things to watch out for as pertaining to yourself, things you might indulge in, whatever the case might be. We've been set up as watchmen to let you all know through the Holy Spirit what's getting ready to fall upon this place. And also to the Lord that set us up so we can be able to address um, quite a bit of things. And out of all those things, address the spirit of pride. Okay? And matter of fact, you know what? I'm going to start it off here in the book of Ezekiel, the 33rd chapter. There will be one second. Okay, let's pull this up, Ezekiel 33. And it's really one of the last few verses here. But this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 33. Matter of fact, really, I mean, the whole chapter really goes into it. I'll start from the top. And it says, again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of his coasts and set him for their watchmen, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. And the reason why I wanted to go into this, because again, we've been set up as watchmen to warn the nation of Israel. Okay, to warn the nation of Israel. It's only, it's only going to be the elect that are going to really take heed to the warning that the Lord has given through the mouth of his prophets but without the shadow of a doubt we have been sent out here to fulfill this here okay we have been set sent out to fulfill this and it makes mention going into when the watchman speaks and you have people that don't want to hear what the watchman says their blood is upon their own hands and the lord is getting ready to come back down yahweh is going to send his son yahweh shai and the angels to come back down to address all manners of pride Especially to those that know that they're Israelites. Okay? It's even written of in the book of First Peter. It makes mention that the Lord is going to visit his house first. I believe that's in First Peter, the fourth chapter. And that's to them that know that they are Israelites. Because you got a lot of Israelites that want to live this Hollywood lifestyle. They glorify themselves. Like literally, they don't pay homage to Yahweh Shai. They believe, they think that they're doing it. But when you look at their actions, you see otherwise. And that's what I want to talk about here. Is as you see, I mean, hopefully this video doesn't get clipped. But I'm really going to play a video here from the IUIC's Passover. And I'm going to just touch up on this animation here. When you watch this animation that I'm about to show you all, you see uh, all manner of blasphemy. Okay, and again, as I just stated before, this is more proof out of the proof that we've seen. The tons of proof that we bore witness to. That these individuals do not care about Yahweh Shai. And we get it. For those of us that are of the household of faith, we understand why Yahweh Shai, his spirit has not been revealed unto everybody that knows that they're Israelites. So more, for, more so, excuse me, be grateful in the fact that you know the God that you serve, that he sent his beloved son, and that we've been invigorated by the Holy Spirit to talk about him constantly. Okay, because you got examples that are out here that again, like I said earlier, that love to uplift themselves. Okay, but this has to happen. That way the scriptures must be fulfilled. 
So I'm going to read this scripture. I'm sorry. I'm going to show this clip here and I'm going to talk about it for a second. When you watch this clip, even before I start bringing out precepts, you see what's wrong with it. You see what's wrong with it. If you if you're spiritual, you'll be able to spot tons of flaws within this clip here. That's if you've been experienced or exposed to this truth and have some form of experience with it. So without further ado, let me go on and play this here. I don't want to talk too much and I'm going to jump back with some scriptures. So this is at the 19 minute mark of the 2023 20th anniversary of the IUIC's Passover. There we go. So this is the scene that I want to show you all right here. And you see the scripture that they posted. It says, therefore rejoice ye heavens, ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And um, they didn't post the scripture there. I don't see it here. But they posted Revelation of uh, one of the verses in Revelation, the 12th chapter. All right. And when you read Revelation, the 12th chapter, it gives you just to give you a brief rundown. The Apostle John, the Revelator, seen a vision on the island of Patmos. And in this vision, he bore witness to a woman clothed with the star. Oh, you know, she had the stars over her head, the sun and the moon before her feet. And that was an allegory to Israel. And, and then it went into another another enigma going into a great dragon, a dra great dragon, excuse me, having seven heads and 10 horns, which that dragon represents the, namely the Edomites, but out of the Edomites, namely, I'd rather say it like this, you have the Roman empire. The dragon represents the Roman empire and how it made war with the woman, which represents Israel. And it goes into the birth of Yahushai. We read Revelation 12, it kind of dips in and out of the future back to the past, of events that came to pass. But more so, and it's the reason why I'm giving the backdrop because we have an understanding or we should have an understanding that this beast in Revelation, the 12th chapter is the Roman Empire and the Herodian dynasty, which still received its power and authority from the Roman Empire. When you look at the history of it, you know, and um, namely when you follow the, the chapter in Revelation 13, it makes mention of that beast with a deadly wound being healed. That going into the Rome, the Roman Empire being revitalized into what we see today, being led by the NATO and the EU, or really the NATO and the EU being headed by America, which in Revelation 17, it is the woman that sits upon the beast. So naturally, when you go into the scriptures and have understanding about this beast, you know it to actually be a kingdom, uh, you know, a, a, a compilation, I'd rather say, or a conglomerate of different kingdoms, which is headed by Mystery Babylon, which is America. All right, and I wanted to explain that first. So let's go on and get back to it. Make some noise for the captain of IUIC. There we go. Hey. You know what? Let's pause it real quick, because we hear all the, all the glamour, all the hands clapping, make some noise for the, for the bishop, for the captain, this, that, and the third. You know, when there's a scripture that actually comes to mind, let's get the scripture. All right, let's pull this out real quick. I believe it's in the book of Luke, the sixth chapter. And this is a judgment or a warning to those that are rich on this side. And when you look at this organization right here, they're, they're definitely enriched within the world. I mean, this organization, I mean, you know, 
from what it from what it perceives like they 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 definitely um they definitely have uh i'd rather put it like this because i don't know their income or their funds or anything they're definitely well off and i don't gotta go into the details and everything but you know they definitely got their hand in the pocket so this is the book of luke chapter 6 verse 24 and i'm going to jump to the point but it says but woe unto you that are rich for you have received your consolation and that word consolation goes into comfort in the Greek, it would be pronounced periklesis, which goes into a comfort, you know, and you can count the celebrities that are here on this side and even those that know that they're Israelites. Because even here in Luke, the sixth chapter, Yahweh Shai was given a warning of those that considered themselves to be holy and such, but really they was wicked and they was rich on this side. The wicked scribes, wicked Pharisees can fall into that category. And we believe in faith, you know, the spirit that's on this camp here, IUIC, is definitely fulfilling this category on top of other groups too but let's continue because i want to get to a point it says woe unto you that are full for you shall hunger woe unto you that laugh now for you shall mourn and weep woe unto you when a man shall speak well of you this is the point that i want right here woe unto you when all men speak well of you for so did their fathers to the false prophets and just to go back to this visit this um this still shot here that's exactly what you see Okay, receiving all this honor. Okay, I mean, this right here looks like a coronation to a degree, but you know, it's like, where's the energy at toward Yahweh Shai? They give all this energy toward men, but that's why the scripture says this also in James, the first chapter, in verse 16. And it's real quick do not err, my beloved brethren. And this here is complete error when you continue to watch this. Because this man, Bishop Nathaniel from the IUIC, that's what everybody's getting ready to clap for. But Bishop Nathaniel from the IUIC is receiving a lot of admiration, you know, from men. And that's why I wanted to read this in Luke 6. Because the warning says, Well, unto you when all men shall speak well of you. Now their response might be, who was to say all men speak well of you? Well, if you want to keep it a buck, all men don't speak well of anybody. But you pretty much get the gist of it. When a large multitude and masses of individuals give you glory and all this honor and praise, when naturally you don't deserve it. Yahweh Shah deserves it. And he's gonna receive, he's receiving it by his servants, but when he gets glorified on the face of this earth, he's already glorified in the heavens. But when he receives his throne on the earth, he deserves his first. He deserves all of this. Even when Yahweh Shah was on the earth, before he was crucified, you had those accounts when people wanted to make him king. They gave him all this attention, but what did he do? Ran into the caves and prayed to his father, okay? And then he would cut them afterwards on occasions because really they were just doing it because they wanted to eat something. John the sixth chapter comes to mind. Read that whole chapter. They wanted to make him king and he ran in the cave and cut him toward the end of the chapter. All right, and that is a man that's worthy of receiving this type of recognition. Not no man on this earth right now. Even including those that are of the elect that are here right now. The elect know what's up. They're not going to be looking for attention and glory and glamour on this side. And quite frankly, as the scriptures say here in Luke 6, it says, Woe unto you when all men speak well of you. So, if you catch this right here, and if you, if you catch this energy of people giving this to you, you should have in the back of your mind, well, it shouldn't be like this. You know, but again, these men err not knowing the scriptures. So let's go back to it. And not even just the men, but all these people that you see on this. Let's go back and play this. They treating this guy like he's a God. Like he is the God, I'd rather say. Check this out. And evil has taken this world and its darkness has no end. 
The earth has given up its strength, and the sea has swept all those who couldn't withstand its crushing weight, and those have perished under the fire of its burning rage. Yet the Israelite trudges forth towards the battle before him with sword in hand and nothing but the armor of God on his back. Now call me off my ignorance, because I didn't hear him quote any scripture as he's going into all this, as Nate is narrating this here. I'm gonna call out my ignorance if that's the case. If those are scriptures, you know, let me know. But these don't sound like scriptures to me. This sounds like a man speaking after his own heart. But his narration is so clever. He has the Morgan Freeman voice. You know, the uh, what's the guy that, that voiced Darth Vader? I forgot his name. You know, but he, he has the narration voice. He, he has the, the eloquent speaking. People are listening. You know the people in the crowd is listening. They just shouted out. It's over 5,000 of them there. They watching this like it's a movie. Let's keep going. The waters crash into one another. He glances at the horizon, searching for the abomination that defiled the earth. It's hiding. Not yet revealing the revulsion it truly is. It has disguised itself for so long, but it cannot hide forever. But it knows its time is short. The air begins to feel heavy. The waves begin to still. It's coming. Suddenly the waves burst, uncovering its terrifying wings. As it lifts up, its seven mighty heads and ten horns reach toward the clouds as tall as the sky. So you see this here. So this is an illustration of the beast having seven heads and ten horns. And it's the reason why I wanted to pause when they quoted Revelation 12. Okay, they went into Revelation 12. Remember, as it's written, it says, Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and ye that dwell in them. You know, a matter of fact, let's just read that again here. Because they're trying to give you uh, an enactment from their own version of Revelation, the 12th chapter. So it says, Shalaki. Yeah, they quoted Revelation 12 and 12 earlier. But it says, therefore, rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come to you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And again, they put the scripture there earlier, but they didn't put the actual quotation of where it came from. But in this same chapter here, it makes mention the beast having seven heads and ten horns, which naturally is going into the Roman Empire. And the Roman Empire is extended here today, which is being ran through NATO and the EU, which is headed by America, which is the woman that sits upon the beast pretending to Revelation 17. But they're all in cahoots. And naturally, it all goes to Esau Edom anyway. Okay? This all goes to Esau Edom. And the reason why I'm expressing this here, because naturally, if you know the scriptures, you know that it is Yahweh Shai that destroys the beast. Okay, and that's the final enactment that takes place when Yahweh Shai comes down with the angels, burns Babylon with fire, and makes war with the kings of the earth during World War III. That's the end all be all. When the beast is destroyed, that's when salvation comes. So let's go back to this video here. I just wanted to explain all this and put this out here. With fury, it releases a frightening roar that would make your blood curdle. He crouches down, swinging the sword, shield in hand. He has left everything behind him. Every point has led to this. Yet the strength of his anger shakes him. Its claws move the ground beneath him. Each of its heads contained the mouth of a fire-breathing dragon, ready to devour him. Its growl is as strong as the thunder above him. He can feel the heat from its scales through his armor. 
His fears of what may happen to him start to flood his mind. He starts to think, maybe it's too much for him. So he closes his eyes and prays to the one true God, Yahweh. <laughs> As if to test his courage, the dragon bends its neck to stare him in the face. Giving Again, you notice, you notice, Yahweh Shai is not mentioned at all. So far, he's not mentioned at all. And again, when I said somebody correct me, this is, this ain't from the scriptures. I was being facetious. But he's literally speaking, and one that's unlearned would literally think that they're quoting the scriptures, and this is actually biblical. But this is not. This is along the range of that Noah movie that um I forgot the I think Russell Crowe. For those of y'all that saw that Noah movie, how off that it was, this is along those lines. Like that Moses movie that came out, which was off too, is more accurate than this right here. Let's keep going. Give him a full intake of its terror and might. Its hot breath sears against his skin. He can feel the heat from its scales through his armor. He has God for strength and courage. His faith is stronger than any fear. His trust in God's power is paramount. And his hands is larger than all of the raging sea and earth combined. He opened his eyes. He will not be defeated. The dragon, seeing his unwillingness to run, raise all of its heads ready to strike. It shoots boulders of fire his way. Yet he jumps into the air, dodging his flames. Watching its every move and ready for its next attack. Furious, the dragon roars with ferocious might and sends a pillar of fire towards him. But with the power of the Lord, he swings forth his shield of faith before him, striking his fury straight on. His flames push against him and begins to slide back. His body is telling him to run. His thoughts are telling him how the dragon's flame will burn him alive. He slides back further and he grips his shield tighter. Never giving in to his forceful rage. He won't give up. He won't give in. For the Lord's word is his shield and his word will never foil. Suddenly, the flames disappear. In the strength of the Lord and in power of his might, he swings his sword. For the word of God is sharper than any sword, hotter than any fire, and stronger than any wind. His faith is stronger than all fear. His trust in his power is paramount. Then the dragon, being discomfited, did strike at him. But with brute force, he fought the dragon and all its seven heads, remembering his forefathers before him and the Lord's promises, which comfort him being ignited with courage. He ran and leaped into the air, flying toward the beast. Then did he come to each of his heads. Run. So as I pause it here, as I pause it here briefly, you see that uh, according to their story in this um, in this illustration, you had this soldier that chopped off all the heads of this beast. You know, he trusted in his God and this, that, the third. Well, yeah, it looks cool. Looks like something from a Marvel movie. Whoever did the animation did an excellent job for the whole team that did it. But according to the spiritual part of it. Let's put the carnal stuff to the side. This is completely off and blasphemous. Because again, what we see continually from different camps that are out here, especially this one, is individuals that glorify themselves to the T. I mean, this is, if, if you want to put narcissistic 
in retrospect, this right here is an illustration of narcissism. Those that love themselves, because if you want to go according to the scriptures, this is not how the beast goes down. But it is Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai that leads the charge of taking the beast down. He is the main one that's going to do it. Yeah, his, yeah the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom, but it's him. And again, not once in this whole illustration has Yahweh Shai been mentioned. They, as much as they like to say Jesus and Christ, that ain't even been mentioned. Okay, before I continue this video, I want to pull a scripture out. And y'all might even be tired of how much I bring this scripture out, man. But I can't help. <laughs> All right. This is the book of Daniel chapter 7. And I mentioned this in a video I did a few days ago, but I wanted to do a video touching up on it precisely. But this is Daniel the seventh chapter going into the four beasts. And the fourth beast being the Roman Empire. And that fourth beast having seven heads and ten horns. Just as you know, you heard in this in this poor interpretation of whatever you want to call it, pertaining to this um 2023 IUIC Passover. But this is Daniel 7 and 8. And it says, I considered the horns. Matter of fact, Salak, let's go up a, a verse prior. Daniel 7 and 7. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly and it had great iron teeth and it devoured and break in and stamp like it it devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with his feet of it and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it and it had ten horns so this is the same beast that you can read about in revelation the 12th chapter beast having seven heads and ten horns it doesn't make mention seven heads right here but if you know the prophecies you wouldn't have to require the seven heads portion to be in Daniel 7 and 7 because you know it's the same beast that it's talking about now when he continue it says I considered the horns and behold there came up among them another little horn for whom before whom there were three of the first plucked up by the roots and behold in this horn were eyes like a man and the mouth speaking great things now this naturally is going into an illustration of the Roman Empire just as I stated earlier and it makes mention how it was different or diverse from all the other beasts that were written of prior. And this is basically how it ruled, how it voted in kings, how it dominated the earth. The Roman Empire changed the game when they got in the power seat, especially since they became an empire. Because, you know, Rome, not you know, but Rome has had a position in the earth for quite some time, even before they became an empire. It was called the Roman Republic before it was actually made an empire. And it was really technically considered an empire when Augustus Caesar got into the power seat. You could say Julius, but naturally, namely, when Augustus Caesar got in power, that's when an era of Rome hit, which is called Pax Romana, which Pax Romana means peace of Rome. And during that period of time where Rome was an empire, there wasn't no stopping Rome. There wasn't no invading. And you could try to invade if you wanted, but they had to fulfill their position on the planet Earth by fulfilling this prophecy that's being read in Daniel 7. But in this video that we just watched, it was an actual physical monster. And this man cutting the heads off and everything. And that's not according to the scriptures. Now, one can say, well, no, it's an illustration. I mean, when you keep watching that video, what are you going to see? Because it's going to get worse. <laughs> you think it's bad right now. Just wait until we continue. But I want to continue to read here. Because right after this fourth beast, verse 9 says, I beheld till the thrones were cast down. And this is Daniel, the prophet Daniel, having his vision. He observed all these beasts, which were really kingdoms, these four beasts in this vision. And after this fourth beast fell, it says, I beheld till the thrones were cast down. And the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hairs of his head was like a pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as a burning fire. This is an illustration of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Okay, and the reason why this is mentioned because after the fourth beast finally falls, the kingdom is going to be established. It says a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were open. And you can also read this here in Revelation 5 as well. Namely, that's going into Yahweh Shai being glorified. 
I beheld because the voice of the great word, I'm sorry, the voice of the great words which the horn spake, I beheld to the beast was slain and the body destroyed and given to the burning flame. Then that burning flame ain't talking about no soldier's sword like they put in this illustration here, but that's going into Babylon being burned by fire. That's the burning flame that it's going into. And then even Yahweh Shai, when he comes back with the angels, there's gonna be more fire. Just as it's written of in Luke 12, as our Lord Yahweh Shai said, just, just, just loosely paraphrasing, I come to bring fire on the earth, but what will I if it already be kindled? So when Yahweh Shai comes, he's gonna bring more fire on top of the fire. It's already gonna be here, okay? And when he continue, it says, as concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives prolonged for a season at a time. I saw in the night visions, behold, one like the son of man. You see, this is after the fourth beast is slain. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the son of man came with clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near and before him. And there was given unto him dominion and glory and the kingdom and all people and nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. So after this first, this first beast, this, this, I'm sorry, this fourth beast, excuse me, after this fourth beast is destroyed, then that's when the kingdom of heaven is established on the earth, which is forever and ever. There's no more the beast trying to do anything after that. Absolutely not. It's taken away. And I wanted to stress that because it's Yahweh Shai, the son of man, that's going to come and do this. This is all this is all through the spirit. This is all through the spirit of the Lord, his father, Yahweh, giving his son glory. And he's sending his son down here with the angels to do this. OK, but when you watch this video here by the IUIC, that's not as the scriptures depict. And remember when I said earlier, just a second ago, it gets worse. So let's continue to watch. This is very inaccurate from the scriptures. This is blasphemous. Still burning with power, he stares at the dragon's dead carcass. About to rest, he releases his shield, but that was the worst thing he has fallen and their burning wrath is set against him. Immediately he runs. More start to gather, forming a large multitude chasing after him. There's too many. Their gnashing teeth are Okay, so let's pause this real quick. So in this illustration, after the beast is slain, he throws his shield down, right? Which Nate says here, that was the worst thing he could have done. So this is an illustration of him losing his faith because that shield represented faith. If you want to go according to Ephesians, the sixth chapter, because he made mention the armor of God in the beginning of this, this um, animation. So in the armor of God, you got the shield, which is considered the shield of faith pertaining to the book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter. So after he slays the beast, this man, he throws his shield down and runs away. And now he's attacked by demons. So this is an illustration of him losing faith. But according to the scriptures, after the beast is destroyed, then the kingdom of heaven is established. So what the excuse my French, like Kevin Samuel says, when the French toast is this this is considered precepts of men and that's why nate's not quoting any scriptures here when you watch this illustration and the people that are the five thousand multitude that's watching this here i mean there's probably a hand I, I wouldn't doubt a handful of men there like uh, i don't know but a lot of them are still gonna continue to to um be entertained 
by this nonsense and of course you're gonna have your elect that wake up out of this you know but this is off and this ain't being corrected by the people amongst them and hopefully this video stays up this is strictly for ed educational purposes and you see um, I'm pulling scriptures up to go into the how this is uh, an error according to the scriptures and there's not any ad hominem attacks being thrown at these guys right here I'm just going into how they're incorrect and this is wicked according to the scriptures and these guys ain't gonna stop of course if they're we know there's elect among them as I said a second ago and they're gonna eventually leave but these guys ain't gonna stop they're not gonna stop until they're addressed by the Lord and that's why I said earlier Yahweh Shai is gonna come back with his angels and even before that that comeback when when the plagues really touches this earth in a higher way it's going to address all forms of pride that you see this here is a form of pride and the lord's getting ready to address the spirit of pride that the sons of men have fulfilled now let's go back to this it gets worse ready to devour all their thoughts toward him are evil and frightening he runs faster charging up the mountain He realizes he can't do this alone. The Lord strikes his lightning like a flood before him, sending him reinforcements, warriors, leaders, saviors. And so he lifted up his sword to the heaven, receiving the help and strike the ground. Real quick, you hear the plural. He's saying warriors, leaders, saviors, right? And we know, you know, I'm going to say this, of course, hey, the scriptures does say in Obadiah that saviors are going to come from Zion. But they are missing out the main point of how these saviors are going to be developed. And that's through Yahweh Shai, the savior, the ultimate savior. That's why he's the savior. He's going to, he already, you know, say it's already been incorporated. It's already been played out, written. I'd rather say it's just being played out. Everything from the beginning all the way to the end has already been written. The Heavenly Father already knows that. Yahweh Shai is already our Savior. But he's still going to come down and return with his angels and deliver us from Babylon and destroy the beast. All this is going to be through the Savior, Yahweh Shai, and under him there will be saviors. But you don't hear these guys mention that. Which again, we know why. Just doing lessons about this. Just doing a lesson about this. This is all for teaching purposes. These guys boast in themselves. But it's written of in the book of 2 Timothy, the third chapter. Let's get that. And it says, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of them own selves. And that's exactly what you see here. It's going to get worse when I continue to play the video. I'm pretty much at the end of it. I don't want to make this lesson too long. But men shall be lovers of themselves. And you're going to really see why I brought this scripture out when I finish this video. It says covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. So let's go back to this and play it. Yo, they got the theatrics on this like it's a 300 movie. After the beast is destroyed, it's still got demons floating around. surged through him and burnt up all their enemies, which have surrounded them. The God have returned, going to take back the world that was promised to them. Look.
So you see this, right? I mean, the scriptures does say they, you know, they don't even know or consider that they're doing evil. And this is an evil work added to the scriptures. <laughs> you can't find none of this in the Bible. The only thing in the Bible that you can find on this animation is the beast having seven heads and ten horns, and that was even that was even improper on how they explained it here. You know, now I haven't watched the whole Passover story, this whole Passover video. So they probably were like, yeah, well, we know that's not exactly how it went or whatever. But this right here is enough. Because you're showing an, an evil off depiction of the scriptures. And you try to justify it afterward. This is nowhere in the scriptures. The only thing so-called Christ related that you've seen in this clip is the Christ that's on that big ass belt buckle that's located under the word Israel you know so Jake don't put Yahweh Shai first and again we get it the water Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai we've been given the spirit we've been given the spirit to understand this and understand and know that it is Yahweh Shai who is preeminent meaning the first or the principle the beginning the alpha as it's written and the omega and when this scene hit, you had people cheering and, and clapping. So you hear you hear the, the the cheering in the crowd after that theatric introduction to their Passover, which again was completely off. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter twenty nine, verse thirteen, and it reads, "Wherefore the Lord saith, for as much as the people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me." It's taught by the precept, precept of men. And that's exactly what you've seen here in this illustration. Completely of men. A manly vision added to the scriptures had nothing to do with the actual prophecy. The man that took that helmet off was not Yahweh Shai, that slew the beast. According to the scriptures, after the beast is slain, then salvation comes. It ain't gonna be no more doubt you had the gargoyle demons chasing them afterwards. Like this might as well should be Roman Catholicism. But again, individuals like this are set up to be stumbling blocks and snares because it's necessary for the two thirds to be the two thirds. They got to be drawn in by the wicked and receive their consolation, receive their judgment, their portion. And a lot of them are being led by these individuals as is written of in Matthew the 23rd chapter. Our Lord Yahweh Shai says, I believe it's in Matthew 23, that if the blind lead the blind, they all shall fall into a ditch. Okay. Now in Isaiah 29 and 13, it says, their fear of the Lord is taught by the precept of men. Okay. And the precept really goes into a commandment. And you have this whole illustration that came up was a pretty much a precept of men. All right. And I want to go into this word fear here. Because I believe the word here in the Hebrew should be Yara, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Yara. Yara. -ah, as you see here. And it says fearing, reverent, or afraid, right? Let's see if there's a root. And naturally, when you go into the root of Yara, you also have the word to teach as well. And let's see if we see it here in the uh, in the lexicon. It says fearing, reverence. With personal pronouns, it forms a paraphrase for the 
finite verb as let's see here it says Anakia it says thou fearest okay so I'm not really seeing anything related to teaching but naturally when you go into the word fear you also have the word um, teach in there as well even when you go into the root word um, Jerusalem Yara Shalom means teaching of peace or to teach peace you have Yara which is fear or to teach and then you have Shalom which is peace so we know Jerusalem doesn't mean fear of peace but it's to teach peace or the teaching of peace because that's where true peace the understanding of it is going to be brought forth and distributed to the world and that's why we are Jerusalem a people for a place because we're teaching the true peace and understanding of the scriptures okay but the reason why I wanted to say that is it makes mention of fear of the Lord or the teaching of the Lord is taught by the precept of men so it's not of the heavenly father this was completely added to the scriptures and you have those that don't have understanding that are there that's cheering it on hip hip hooraying you know dancing to it but they're completely off and if i may call a spade a spade this reminds me of the spirit the israelites were in when moses was receiving the ten commandments when you read about that account it goes into how you had israelites that were rising up to play Okay, and quite frankly, we always make mention of this, but if you consider yourself to actually be a follower of Yahweh Shai, you will keep the Passover like he kept it until he comes back. That should be the standard right there. Jake wants to do their own thing. Yahweh Shai kept the Passover, knowing what was getting ready to befall his. Uh, what was good, getting ready to what he was getting ready to meet. Is it not written? The servant is not greater than his master. We know eventually it's going to come to pass where Satan shall come with great wrath. And it started, but it's only going to intensify. So hey, the spirit, the scriptures with a spirit too, but the scriptures also goes into it. A sword is sharpened and furbished. Why then are you making mirth? But again, as the famous quote says, when words won't teach, adversity will. And that's quite frankly what a lot of Israelites are going to experience in this time of judgment. They're going to experience, experience much adversity because they did not want to take heed to what the scriptures say. That's why I wanted to read in James, the first chapter, do not err, my beloved brethren. Because this is complete error. But you see, it's thousands that are there that are being deceived by this. And even more thousands that have watched this and have been deceived. So the, the water Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai for the remnant. He opened our mouths to speak these things and granted us with understanding. Because this is a device that could be used to get you to catch you slipping if the Lord ain't dealing with you. As is written, the elect ain't gonna be deceived by the these devices and snares of Satan. And this is clearly a snare from Satan in this video here. It came down with the lightning glowing and everything, which again it's cool. And yeah, Israelites are gonna shine as is written, but man, Yahweh Shai gonna get it first. Yahweh Shai destroys the beast. He gets the credit. He gets the glory. Okay. That's why I said earlier, these guys glorify themselves. And that's why I want to read that in 2 Timothy 3. Because the Apostle Paul has given Timothy and ourselves insight on the spirit that is going to possess a lot of these off individuals here, especially in these last days. And this is an example of it right here when you watch this, this, this Passover video from the IUIC. So I'm going to end it off there. Hopefully this was edifying. I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Bahakwadash. I also want to give double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations unto you elect across the four winds of this earth, fulfilling your lots in all truth and all sincerity. Shalom.